That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. So the judge actually said that I will not send you to jail if you do this thing. And, and this is, I just want to give it to you in his own words. This is what he said the conditions were of him not sending her to jail for opening up her hair salon. That you now see the error of your ways and understand that the society cannot function where one's own belief in a concept of liberty permits you to flaunt your disdain for the rulings of duly elected officials. That you owe an apology to the elected officials whom you disrespect, disrespected by flagrantly ignoring and in one case defiling their orders, which you now know obviously apply to you. That you understand that the proper way in which an or in an ordered society to engage concerns which you may have had is to hire a lawyer and advocate for change, an exception or an amendment to laws that you find offensive. That you publicly state that this is the way that citizens in the state should behave. And that you represent to this court that you will today cease operation of your salon and not reopen until after further orders of this of the government permit you to do so. This court will consider the payment of a fine in lieu of the incarceration, which you've demonstrated that you have so clearly earned. I have not been this disgusted at a clip in a really, really long time. I mean, just the, the, the pride and the hubris drips off of this guy. It's palatable. How disgusting this is. And, uh, oh, our good friend, another News Radio 1440 host, Kevin Elkins, actually just commented on this. I think he got J God and Judge mixed up. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's a pretty good synopsis of this whole thing. So here's the little picture. And it's not a little deal, but this is the little picture. Let's look specifically at this case and look at what he did in a vacuum. I think what happened is because he defied, she defied his order specifically he got butthurt about it, and because he got butthurt, he allowed his personal feelings to influence his judgment, deeming that this woman was a danger to society and needed to be locked up away from civilization so that she could reflect on her crimes. Because he said that the thing that he would take in exchange for not sending her to jail, the thing that he would take is essentially a an indicator that that is not an appropriate punishment for her was to apologize to him. I mean, this is a judge that let his personal feelings get in the way of his judgment, and that is not something that you want in a judge, for sure. But let's look at the bigger picture. Let's look at the content of what he actually said. I'm going to go through it point by point and explain each of the problems with this because the whole way through, I just wanted to... I threw up in my mouth a couple of times just watching this. I... I was seething mad at this. This is much more like a totalitarian state, something that would happen there rather than America. And here's why. First of all, he says that the, he made a big deal about defying an order from a duly elected official. Well, here's the thing. Duly elected or not, no official, whether it's a senator or a judge or a county clerk or the Kaiser, none of them have the right to take away a God-given right. And when you're talking about a business, which is your property, and the right to assemble, those are God-given rights guaranteed to us by the Constitution. Whether or not it was a good idea, whether or not this was the safest thing to do, doesn't matter. Those are rights given to you by your Constitution. No elected official has the right to take those away from you unless you have actually broken the law. They were making the act of assembling and the act of uh, actually interacting with your own property and using your own property the crime itself. That is a ridiculous abuse of a God-given right, which no government, regardless of who they are, has the right to take from you. I don't care whether they were duly elected or not. Be they... Elected officials or a dictator? Doesn't matter. They don't have the power to do that. Another thing. Why is this disrespecting an, an elected official? 
Why is that so repugnant to him? This is America. We have free speech. We disrespect elected officials all the time. I've probably disrespected at least five or six since the show started. That's okay. There is no law that says you must respect elected officials. Follow the law, sure. But the idea that you have to respect an elected official? No. That's an entirely un-American attitude to have. We're supposed to disrespect our elected officials. <laughs> We've always done that. It's literally how this country was started. By not respecting elected officials. And so the fact that he finds that so distasteful is, is pretty indicative of the kind of person that he is. And I think the worst part of this whole thing is where he said that you defiled their orders. I'm sorry, when did these stay-at-home orders become scripture? Because by saying defiling, he is invoking religious, holy kind of uh, emphasis. For example, it is wrong, in my opinion, to drive recklessly. It's a very bad thing to do. It is wrong, for example, to drive drunk. It's a horrible thing to do. But is driving drunk defiling the law? Well, no, not really, because the law is not a sacred thing. It's not scripture. It's not gospel. Now, you could make the argument that doing something like that, doing something reckless, is defiling God's law, is defiling the principle of love your neighbor as yourself. You can make that statement, but you can't say that just because something is the law of the land that you're defiling that law by not doing so. Dude, this isn't the Bible. You're not going to hell for this. And especially with something as minor as this, just opening up your shop and allowing people to come in and get a haircut. That's defiling the law? You're treating this person as though the law is your God and she is a heretic that has disrespected your law. That's what ticks me off about this. Because he's acting as though he is some kind of religious superior disciplining a child that defiled a religious statute. That's how it comes off. And that's what burns me up about it. And furthermore... What he's suggesting that she do, instead of doing this, and instead taking a, a lawyer and going through the process, he knows that that's a non-starter. He knows that by the time this woman lawyered up and actually filed a, a suit with the court, it would be several months at the absolute fastest that she would be able to open up her shop. Well, that defeats the entire purpose. The whole purpose of this was to make income where she wasn't making income, she can't spend money that she doesn't have on an attorney to get this thing overturned months into the future. That doesn't do her any good. The only thing that does good for her now is to open her shop back up. And so he knows that that's a ridiculous argument. But at the end of that, he basically suggests that he wants her to be a cheerleader for his cause. He wants her to not only agree with him, but to go and proclaim it, and in his own words, recommend to other citizens that this is the thing that they ought to do. Excuse me? Not only are you saying that she has to comply with the law from here on out, but she has to go out and advocate for something she doesn't believe in? I mean, that's the very definition of compelled speech. We just had a Supreme Court case specifically on this saying that compelled speech is even worse than compelled silence. Compelling a person under penalty of law to, suggest, to say that they have to say something that they don't believe in? That is the antithesis of free speech. I'm absolutely dumbfounded that this could happen in an American courtroom. And he ends that off with saying that the government must commit, or sorry, the government must permit you to open back up, and that's when you'll be allowed to do it. Again, it assumes as though your property rights are permissions granted to you by government, not a God-given right. That we will grant you permission to go ahead and open your business up. No, it's my property. You don't have that right. I have that right. You're not allowed to step on that. That's what the Constitution says. And furthermore, at the end where he says that you've clearly earned this kind of imprisonment, 
basically suggesting that what she has done is so obviously distasteful to him that she is clearly somebody that belongs in prison. I think it's hilarious that he says that, and then the Supreme Court of his own state says, uh, no, this is ridiculous overreach. And Governor Abbott, the one that actually made these orders, is saying, yeah, that's, that's not an appropriate punishment for what happened there. I think that the best way to summarize this is to go to somebody that can articulate this even better than I can. To set up this quote that I'm going to share with you, if you've ever read 1984, the main character is essentially caught in an act of insurrection against the government. He's found out to be a rebel that does not like the status of things and is not a true believer in the party that is controlling the world there in 1984. He is a rebel of sense, and, and he hasn't done anything necessarily all that rebellious. He didn't start like a rebellion and try to overthrow the government, anything like that. He just doesn't believe that the government is right. And the government in this story says that, no, 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 we're going to turn this guy into the most fervent believer that we can. And it, this is explained by one of the villains in this story in 1984 uh, by George Orwell. This is one of the, uh, this is the primary antagonist speaking as they're torturing the main character to make him into a true believer. We do not destroy the heretic because he resists us. So long as he resists us, we never destroy him. We convert him. We capture his inner mind. We reshape him. We burn all evil and all illusion out of him. We bring him over to our side. Not in appearance, but genuinely, heart and soul. We make him one of ourselves before we kill him. We make the brain perfect before we blow it out. I mean, if that's not the epitome of evil, I don't know what is. And doesn't that sound an awful lot like what the judge was discussing here? That, no, no, we're going to take this woman that disagrees with us, and we're going to turn her into the most fervent cheerleader, saying that in order for her to escape jail time, she must go out and advocate for other citizens to do exactly what she originally didn't do. I mean, was this guy reading 1984 and suggesting, yeah, I want to be like that guy, the villain of the book, because that's what it sounds like to me. I don't even recognize this country if that's something that is allowed in our justice system. I am so glad that the state of Texas saw fit to, to go back on that. I, I, frankly, I'm afraid that if it had happened in a blue state, they would not have done this. The bottom line here is, this is America. Our government and our officials that serve in that government are our servants, not our masters, not our superiors, not our priests. We the government, uh, we are the people that run the government, not the other way around. The government follows our lead. We don't follow it. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, woke brigade. <laughs>